I think I made you guys wait long enough. What do you think? Should we should we start the stream? Yes or no? Should we start? What are we thinking? Oh, I'm gonna wait for the next song to come on. I gotta adjust the volume for that. Crazy in outer space. Thank you for becoming a member. Welcome in. Damn, can the next song start already? Jeez. There we go. All right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome in. Welcome to the stream. Happy, what's today? Wednesday? Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome in to Monument Mythos Season 2 Part 2, which I didn't think I was going to have to make, but uh, sorry, yesterday's stream was just going for so long, I needed a whole nother, a whole nother stream for that. Uh, before we get started, I want to address some things. There's a lot of new people coming into the channel, which is incredible, uh, but a lot of people are a bit confused on how I do things on here, so I just wanted to clarify some stuff and just to clarify some rude comments that people have been making. Um, first of all, the reason why I do these streams is, uh, one, because it's a way for me to interact with you guys and I love actually interacting with my chat and my viewers. It's a lot easier than just doing it through a YouTube video, a YouTube live stream. I can talk to you guys directly and, you know, you guys can give me insight that I may not have known. Uh, Nanbot, thank you for becoming a member. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. And Vald, Vlad, Vlad Wolf King, thank you for becoming a member as well. Um, but... So I like to live stream these things first, and then for those that miss the live streams, I end up making an edited down version of it into a video. Uh, so basically, after today's stream, both of the season two VODs are gonna go to members only, so only members can view them, and then I'm gonna work on a video to then release to everybody, and you'll get the entire season two in one video, all done. Uh, that'll probably be out within the next few days. I wanna say Saturday, I'm hoping for Saturday I could get it out by. But this is a lot of content, so I'm going to be like slaving away editing this. Um, another thing, people were claiming in the comments on the VOD from yesterday's that I've seen these videos before. I haven't. When I have seen an analog horror video before, I tell you guys that I have. And it's very obvious when I have, because if there's a jump scare or anything, I don't get scared. Like, I have no reaction. And so you know I'm not lying to you. Also... What do I get out of pretending like it's my first time seeing it? That means I have to fake my reactions. And that's a lot harder than just giving you my genuine reaction. So I don't know why I'd actually fake, you know, watching these again. Also, um, I think people might think that because they see like the red line under the YouTube videos, which shows that I watched it. I literally do that so I could find a screenshot for the thumbnail sometimes. That's it. Um, also, another thing. There's a lot of spammers in chat or people saying some craziness. You're going to get timed out or you're going to get um, turned invisible, which is like a thing you could do on YouTube, where basically you're typing and nobody actually sees it. Um, the mods will do that to you if you are rude or like spamming craziness. Like the crab thing is kind of funny that I really don't care about. Um, but like if you're doing anything, you know, toxic or just weird, you're going to get timed out. I'm sorry. It just has to happen. Um, I think that's about it though. That's really all I wanted to address. <laughs> um, but yeah, welcome in everybody. Today we're going over the rest of season two. We have six videos left in Monument Mythos season two, and it looks like a large majority of them have to do with things that happened in season one. So I am excited about that. 
um uh, for stuff that i missed just now primal world thank you for the five dollar super chat would you rather fight a bear covered in jars of peanut butter or fight a jar of peanut butter covered in bears a jar of peanut butter covered in bears because either the bears would be really small or it would just be one bear right i guess either way i'm fighting a bear no yeah i'm not sure <laughs> I'm gonna go with jar of peanut butter covered in bears. Uh, the dog with rabbit ears. Thank you for the two dollars super chat. I am a dog, but also rabbit. Do you like dogs? I do like dogs. I sadly am allergic to them though, which does suck a lot. I wish I wasn't. Um, VV, thank you for becoming a member. By the way, much much appreciated. I gotta find a way to get this alert thing better, because I gotta like refresh it. Lobster, thank you for the ninety nine cents. And sir, sir. Thank you for becoming a member. Welcome to the gang. Guys, if you want to become a member, there's a link in the description down below. It says you can become a member. You get access to some videos early. You get access to some private live streams and stuff like that. Very cool. Uh, Neil, what's going on? Thank you again for the $50. Much appreciated. Praise the crab. Praise the crab. Can we spam some crab emojis in chat again? <laughs> Thank you so much, Neil, for the $50 super chat. Jeez. Thank you so, so much. For those can uh for those that are confused about the crab emoji uh there was a crab thing that happened in stream yesterday with monument mythos so you might have to catch up by the way if you didn't see the stream yesterday um the vod link is in the description down below right now you could go watch it right now because you won't be able to watch it unless you are a member after today until the full video comes out um but all right let's get started enough of me chatting let's run it i don't want to really have a super long stream today I love you guys to death, but I do got editing to do. By the way, the sequel to the Tangy Virus will be out tomorrow. So if you guys didn't see that video, make sure to go watch it before the drop comes tomorrow. The Oracle Project, basically. Video will be out tomorrow. That that analog horror was so good, man. So, so good. All right. Uh, this is Fallen Father. Um, we hope you're happy wherever you are. It's the description for this one. All right, here we go. Fallen Dead. The shocking surprise visit. Are you ready? No, I'm not. They followed me all the way home. <gasps> Squirrels! Mr. Squirrel! Let's go! He's back! Guys, we got Return of Mr. Squirrel! From Canyon Crown. And he is beautiful. Yes, he is. He just gave you the stink eye. Okay. <laughs> All right. But forget about that. Yeah, please, can we? Since you're gone, you'll never see this video, but... I had a dream that you were still here and you were about to leave the house. And right before you left, you said, I'm going home now. I know your health problems made your body a prison and now you're free, but we miss you so much. I wish I hugged you more often. I love you, dad. I hope you're happy wherever you are. I can't stop thinking about the day you left. It hurts so much to remember. The worst memories live at home with us. I like don't want to breathe. I'm afraid it's going to get me. <laughs> I 
I can't believe it's been three days already. Nathaniel Arnoldson, July 1961 to May 2021. Erica Kazanzas. Kazanas. Sorry. Okay. A um, few things to digest in that video. First of all, forgot to put out the Discord notification. Might be. Um, I could close Discord now. Um, let me grab my notebook. All right. So that kind of confirms what my thoughts were throughout that video, that ending portion there. So we know from Canyon Crown that I believe Nathaniel went to um, find his sister Maya. Because the person that made the video for Canyon Crown was saying like, oh, we're trying to find, uh, you know, Aunt Maya. Uh, she went missing. But Nathaniel was also involved in the same kind of sketchy stuff that um, that Maya was involved in. So it makes sense if he got targeted and killed, possibly. And also, they, you know, they refer to Mr. Squirrel. So whoever made that video of Canyon Crown has to be the same person making this video. At least that's my thoughts. Um, but we also... So here's my thing. We know about the whole like giant head stuff going on. Is that what covers this curtain here? Because this person's clearly hiding from something. And uh, something huge kind of overshadows the curtain. Either it's um, a giant floating head. Or. It's the statue that kills them. With the uh, Giza glass. There was a face. Where'd you guys see a face? Yo, whoever said my mic was muted, you almost got me for a sec. Was there actually a face top, right? Are you trolling? You guys are trolling. Eric Kaz Kazanas. That sounds... Oh my god. Who is that? Does anybody remember exactly who that is? That name sounds so familiar. July 1961. When the camera was looking up? What do you mean when it was looking up? Oh. Like... There? Oh, that's the creator's IRL dad. My bad. I, I, I totally... Thank you. Thank you for that. I, I was like, dude, that last name sounds so familiar. No shit. Jesus. Sorry, guys. My brain needs to get jump-started here. Alright, hold on. So you're saying... I don't see no face. On the tree? Oh! Oh! I didn't even see this! Dude, I actually thought this was just a part of the tree. You're talking about this, right? Bro, wow. Okay. How did I totally miss that? Right? This is what you're talking about? Also, there are no captions. Huh. I did not even notice that. All right. Well, more floating heads. This Arnoldson family is heavily tied into this whole situation. Ooh, okay. This next video is called Rockefeller Revelation. 
statement from Mays. What do you think happened to President Rockefeller? So obviously, something good ain't happened to him, clearly. Uh, but let's find out. Maybe it's more about, um, you know, the Rockefeller tree situation from season one. Oh, uh, let me check on some super chats. Uh, the dog with rabbit ears. There are no hidden captions in that last video. You'll know if there's hidden captions or not, because this won't be grayed out like this. It'll give me the option to do it. But most of them, uh, most of them don't. Uh, Benny Hicks, thank you for the $2. We have created the Crustacean Nation. I don't know what that means, but thank you for the super chat. Uh, the Foolishly Motivated Ghost, thank you for the $2 super chat. Happy birthday. Thank you for coming to the stream on your birthday. I hope you're having a good birthday so far. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, Vlad Wolf, thank you for the dollar super chat. Janali, thank you for becoming a member. And everything will get better. Thank you for becoming a member. My dad unexpectedly passed away three months ago. I will try my best to continue his work. Dr. Disturbing. We keep getting these Dr. Disturbing Presents videos. The Rockefeller Tapes. Part 7. I remember seeing the first German airship in its hangar. I was astounded by its immensity until I saw my own name printed on its side. At that moment, an entirely new feeling unveiled within me. It was an emotion which frequented me in childhood. A blend of revulsion and satisfaction that I followed the execution of a cruel jest on a friend or a stranger. A pin in one's foot. A tumble down a stairwell. What would others think? I thought to myself that the sight of a foreign airship bearing the name of the American president dropping explosives upon cities of unarmed civilians. I wish to say that revulsion was my sole reaction to this invention, yet I cannot deny that I was proud of this magnificent vehicle. It was perhaps the greatest war machine ever developed by mankind, made possible by yours truly. By nightfall, shame outweighed pride, and I requested the immediate removal of my name from the airship and all its future successors. Although the Germans complied, they continued to refer to their airships as Rockefellers. I knew that removing my name would not obscure the facts for very long. It was inevitable that the American public would one day become aware of my secret dealings in Germany. Thank you Rockefeller, thank you for that. Luftschiff Rockefeller 70 Nose Body Tail Elevator Rudder Surveillance Car Envelope Gunner Gondolas Control Car Spindle Interior What? It had always been my intention to reinvigorate the American economy. Once I had been debriefed of the situation in the Grand Canyon, the overpopulation of crowns, 
I realized that I was also hearing the beginnings of a solution to the impending economic collapse. That solution being slavery. I can imagine your reluctance to read on, and I entirely understand. Rest assured, I believe that all citizens should be unconditionally promised the very freedoms that our country established at its founding. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. However, crowns are not men or women, nor are they animals. They are merely the decayed shells of ignoble criminals. They do not qualify for the same freedoms exercised by ordinary civilians. Once they were conditioned and bound together, the crowns became the perfect workforce. They did not rebel, for they could not speak. They could not leave, for they were chained. And best of all, the crowns were incapable of forming unions. Wow. Um, so for anybody that might be confused, the crowns are the floating heads after... Um, the statue cuts the heads off of these criminals with the Giza blade. Their heads become separate. They like blow up. So I guess that makes sense why they're inside an airship because they I guess they actually make the airship float. Uh, yeah, the crowns were people though. They were criminals to the country basically. Um, so they would attract they would attract these criminals to the Grand Canyon. However, they would do that. And then uh, the statue from the season from one finale would go up in there with the Giza, with this special blade, which was Giza glass, cut off their heads, uh, their bodies they would basically dispose of, and then their heads would blow up into these like giant things, which is why that's why you see a face when we see the diagram of inside of the airship. So yeah, I am 23. I saw someone asking chat. Anti-airship death ray. Huh? Section through drum. Pedestal. Starter assembly. Starting switch. Plug-in cable to ballast box. Lamp. Lamp holder. Front elevation. Turntable and arms. Elevation clamp. Positioning handle. Lamp adjuster assembly. Lens. What is that in the lens? I'm not even sure what that is. Germany was the first nation to inquire about the crowns and their potential applications in warfare. I never mentioned the vast quantities of geyser glass we owned since I knew that it could provide them with many more crowns at low cost. Instead, after signing several agreements, and receiving a tremendous German sum, I provided them with over a hundred crowns, along with my best advisors and the brightest engineers. Our time with the Germans gave rise to the greatest military vehicles in history, the Rockefellers. Germany's growing demand for men and crowns to construct more Rockefellers revitalize the American economy. Very few nations offered to hire as many of our men and women, and none would have paid as graciously as Germans did. It was, by all accounts, the greatest and most sustainable partnership of recent times. I could not have foreseen the destruction those airships would eventually inflict to the very nation that provided them. I thought that their creation 
would unite Germany and America. I could not have predicted that by 1918, Rockefeller bombing raids would have killed thousands of American and European soldiers. My terms were over before I could take action against the Germans. It was the administration after my own which was tasked with the seemingly impossible mission of destroying the Rockefellers while preserving the reputation of the former president. Although they knew of my dealings in Germany and had every opportunity to expose me, they chose not to, for in their eyes, no good could come of it. However, I knew it was only a matter of time before I would become the laughingstock of my country. As the war drew to a close, I often found myself in a daze, envisioning my assassination on the streets of New York, or, more likely, on the steps of my very own center. However, it would be years before my visions would acquire any plausibility. President Hughes did a fine job of eliminating every Rockefeller while concealing my involvement. Operation Pyramid Plasma Not to Scale Airship Death Ray, Men Men, The Great Pyramid. Okay. So that's how they took down the Rockefellers? It is a miracle that only- By the way, this has to be the only thing I don't like about this series. I hate when Rockefeller talks. He talks like so slow and it's- his volume is really low. I just don't like it. Only <laughs> now, the news of my involvement in the Great War has become widely known. Thankfully, information on the crowns has continued to stay hidden from the public spotlight. I would much rather have the public believe that Germans were the only persons inside when the airships were shot down and crashed in flames. With the tragedy at the center, and now the airship scandal, known by many as the Rockefeller revelation, I believe that my failures finally caught up to me. There are men outside the center who had once been my supporters. Now, they want me executed. The policemen have kept the crowds at bay, though I believe that my assassination is, like the revelation, inevitable. To be elected the president of a country is the greatest honor a people can bestow. But at the moment, I do wish to be the famous oil tycoon that young Virginia Arnoldson believed I was. Forgive me. Effects of operation. Stage one, disintegration. Hold up. What? The men divide into microscopic parts. Stage two, ambulation. The semi-conscious and unstable remains of the men traverse the desert in an attempt to better understand their condition.
The men fuse together into a more stable being. That's stage three amalgamation. Stage four migration. As one, the men return to their homeland. Is this them flying home? Stage five, retaliation. The men execute a counterattack. On May 23rd, 1937, President Rockefeller entered a bunker underneath 30 Rockefeller Plaza. He was never seen again. Investigators found that the door of the bunker had been melted open with possibly the most powerful heat ray ever built. To this day, the Rockefeller Foundation considers the president's disappearance an abduction. I was gonna s only two photos of the potential suspect were ever re released. Didn't the Air Force One angel melt the door to the Air Force One plane to get in or something? Wait, hold on. What was that? Only two photos of the potential suspect were ever released. And it's pictures of the tree. The tree. Can you see them? Oh, hold up. No, I do see that. There's a head here, arms, legs. Where is it here? Ah. Rockefeller revelation. So if you actually remember at the end of, um, which one was that? Rockefeller, uh, on. Let me find it. I'll pull it up what they said. Mr. Manticore. Monument Mythos Season 1. Rockefeller Tree Tragedy. That's what it was. If we go back to the Rockefeller Tree Tragedy, the last thing they talk about... Yeah. I believe this is Rockefeller's son that says this. Many, including my father, believe that the 1934 Christmas tree vanished. This is untrue. I've seen it wandering in the plaza on many occasions, and it resembles a man far more than any tree. That sounds like what we just saw. So maybe that's what he was talking about. That's, I feel like that's got to be the connection there. I still am not fully sure about what the Air Force One Angel is about, whether it's the same thing or not. It sounds like they're very sim similar, but um, there is an Air Force One Fallen Angel video in this season, so I'm sure we'll learn more in that one. Um, but it sounds like that this thing just basically went in and got Rockefeller. That's what it sounds like, for the most part. Uh, Loud Flavor, what's going on, my guy? Thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Big fan. Love the spooky grind, bro. Keep them coming. I got you, bro. Thank you so much, guys. If you're not subscribed to Loud Flavor, make sure to go subscribe. Loud Flavor also does a lot of a lot of gaming content, does horror games like me. Very awesome guy. Uh, do you one 
do you want to sit <laughs> thank you for the ten dollar super chat keep up the good work on the analysis your videos somewhat help bypass time for when i'm doing stuff i'm happy that you enjoy the videos thank you so so much i appreciate the support and thank you for the super chat um what else what else what else uh life is hard thank you for the 25 and it's psycho thank you for the 20 dollars super chat there are two more episodes of the reel out don't worry i know that there are episodes of the reel out that i have to go over um, I don't know when I'm going to go over them yet. I want to kind of finish up Monument Mythos and uh, get this Oracle Project video out. But I want to say probably next week I'll go over those videos of the reel. Also, Vlad Wolf King, thank you for the $5 super chat. First stream I joined live. Would you rather live in the world of Vita Karnas or Monument Mythos? Probably Monument Mythos. I think Vita Karnas, um, with the way that how you could just walk around and a mimic can walk up to you at any moment, I would rather the world of Monument Mythos, I think. Is your username syphilis? Thank you for the $10 super chat. <laughs> Finally made it to the stream. Always watch you doing work. Thank you for making it to the stream. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> what a username. Don Cheetos, thank you for the $2, $2 super chat. This is the junk food of analog horror. That's a good thing, right? I actually think this is this is one of those like really well crafted analog horrors. Like this is so deep. There's what thirty six videos in total for the three seasons, not including the Nixon side story. By the way, can can you guys tell me, Monument Mythos experts that are in chat, do I watch the Nixon verse and then season three? Because I heard something that season three is confusing without the Nixon verse, but I also heard someone tell me to watch the first three seasons and then watch the Nixon verse. So I don't know. Which one is it? Do I watch the Nixon verse first or do I watch season three first? Nixon verse first. Ah, oh, damn. Nixon verse before season three. Interesting. Okay. 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 Gotcha. All right. Well, I'll make sure to do that then. Nixon verse, then season three. Copy. Damn, so I guess next season that we're going over is Nixon verse. All right, this next one is called Washington Wonderland. Um, statement from Ray's, from Mays. Everett Arnoldson, commonly referred to as the 20th Washington absentee. So um, remember the Washington Monument? We didn't know who the 20th victim was. Seems like it's Everett Arnoldson, who is, again, related to this Arnoldson family here. How about live in Mandela catalog or Vina Cardis? Mandela catalog. Cause at the moment in Mandela catalog, it seems that only uh, Mandela County and the near counties surrounding it are affected by the alternates. At least that's how it appears to me. So Vita Cardis is affecting the planet. So definitely not that one. Yeah, so we got another Arnoldson here. Everett Arnoldson commonly referred to as the 20th Washington absentee is a huge, All right, let's watch the video first before I say that. <laughs> I feel like I should have probably read that after. All right, uh, let's let's run it back. After an unsuccessful lobotomy, Virginia Fate Arnoldson provided a more complete account of. Wait. Hold on a minute. There is no way. Is Virginia not the girl from Rockefeller Tragedy? So Virginia is an Arnoldson? Whoa. Yeah, Virginia's the girl that the Rockefeller tragedy happened to. Wow, so the Arnoldson family is in deep. Like, deep. Because that, what, the Rockefeller tragedy happened in, like, 1932 or something like that? Like, somewhere around that area? And all this stuff about Maya Arnoldson has been somewhat recent, right? So, wow, that this family's in deep, dude. What the hell? 
and this first sentence alone after an unsuccessful lobotomy bro but virginia fate Arnson provided a more complete account of the rockefeller tree tragedy so it seems like we're going to learn more about the tragedy itself and what happened this is her account Okay, so she's a lot older now. Everything switched. Even my parents. My new ones did not like me, so they left me. My foster parents did not like me either. So, I was left at an orphanage. Some of my friends were better off. But many were left at the orphanage too. We loved each other. We stuck together. Until we were 18, then we were separated. The military took the boys, and the doctors took the girls. They probably do not remember the tree anymore. Soon, I will not remember either. But I hope you will remember. Remember for me. When the tree changed me, I was not scared. At first, I did not know what was wrong with me. When my eyes adjusted, I was in a field of special trees. I was reminded of a story my ma told me. I was in Wonderland. This is my Wonderland. I held myself close and looked up. The trees looked like they ended, but above them, there were upside down trees. And above those, there were upright trees, like they were being reflected. Several different realities. The pattern repeated for as far as I could see. I looked down, and I thought I was on solid ground. But when I looked more closely, I was sitting on a thin, floating layer of dust. It smelled like baby powder. And through the dust, I could see the start of another tree. And below that one, there was another, and another, an infinity of trees. While I played with the dust, I heard distant footsteps. They grew louder and louder. Then there were bright flashes of light all around me. Out from these lights, hundreds of people ran out. One man came up to me and whispered, the trees are not the trees. He had such sad, tired eyes. As he picked me up and put me on his shoulders, he said, you could be her. Anyone could be her. I promise I will not leave you. There was a bright flash and we were in another field. He was sitting in front of me with his hand out. Another flash, and we were both running past through the woods. Another flash, and we were both lying on the ground, looking at infinity. Every few seconds, there was a flash, and we would be doing something else. Again. And again. And again. Over and over and over. It would not. It felt like forever. Years of flashes. I was so angry at first. But soon, I had those sad, tired eyes of his too. We were so sad and tired. Every now and then we would flash to another layer of dust. Above or below, you know. But we would always see the climbers. I think there were people who tried to climb the trees while they were flashed around. They were stretched and burnt. Maybe the dust was the people that fell. The man was always with me. He kept me safe the whole what time. What is going on? This has been years. It felt like 500 years. 
I named him Everett. He was always there. He never left me. Everett was my best friend. Then, on one random day, no time, one random time, all the trees bent, and the flash brought me back to New York. All my friends were around me, but this was another New York. I did something wrong, and I lost my book. I ruined everything. I should have stayed home that night. Why did I not stay home? I lost everything to me and my friends. I ruined their lives. I will not tell you about the orphanage. It was a hard time. I will keep memories of the orphanage to myself. They do not matter to you. When I was 18, I left the orphanage. I looked for my new parents. Alright, I'm pausing, because so I don't know how long this is going to go on for before we actually get like a break. I actually don't understand. I don't understand. For a second, I thought maybe that was Riley Tillen, um, who all who got lost like in the corner dimension, right? Um, but she calls him Everett. She said that she named him Everett, which I think is weird. Why doesn't she know his actual name? I also don't understand the whole stretched out burned people thing. I don't think we've seen that in the series so far. Like stretched out burnt people. It's explained later in season three. Of course it is. <laughs> I mean, W. Yeah, W. Everett. He sounds like he was a dope dude because he stayed with her the whole time and was very close with her. But, um, all right, let's continue. I, I guess I'm supposed to be insanely confused right now. I can't even become close to making a, uh, a connection. We're not together anymore. My new pa died from a broken heart. And Uma lived all by herself. She did not let anyone into her house anymore. All because of me. I wanted my old parents back. I went to the Rockefeller Center for an answer. The tree stood at the top of the plaza. Oh! Everyone else. I was never supposed to visit again, but I did. And I spoke to her. At first, I could not understand her. Her voice was like a breeze behind my eyes. Her? It was cold. And I could not move. But soon, I could understand. She said that I had to be ready to exchange one life for my own. She understood that I wanted to go back home. To my New York. She said, come back in three years. And I did. I waited. 1,095 days. I returned three years later. At first, I could not understand her. Her voice was like a breeze behind my eyes. It was cold, and I could not move. But eventually, I could understand. She said that I had to be ready to exchange one life for my own. She understood that I wanted to go back home, to my New York. She said, come back in three years, and I did, I waited, 1,095 um. days, I returned three years later, at first, I could not understand her, her voice was like a breeze behind my eyes, it was uh. cold, and I could not move, but eventually, I could understand, she said that I had to be ready to exchange one Okay, it looks like it repeats one more own. time. She understood that I wanted to go back home to my New York. 
she said, come back in three years. And I did. I waited 1,095 days. days. While I waited, I met a man. He was a very important man. Oh? Secret agent. Oh? He followed me everywhere. Hey, yo? One day, I found him waiting inside my house. He told me that he was here to monitor me. No. To watch and protect me. But he had fallen in love with me. No one else liked me. Bro, what is going on? So we took each other. We grew close. Leonard loved me. Leonard. I loved him too. Wait. Together, we had a baby boy. I named him Everett. Little Everett was inside for nine months when I saw the tree again. She put directions in my head. I followed those directions. I walked for four days. I had to. I wanted to go She home finally has the so life. Badly. But I became so happy when I could hear the music. It was like the tree's voice. But warm. The Washington Monument looked much bigger in person. Its door went up high, like it was for something much bigger. Then I went inside. There were bodies everywhere. The breeze told me to relax. I went on the elevator. It went up. All the way up. It stopped at the top and the music blared. It was so loud I could not move. The floor opened and I fell all the way down. I felt myself hit the ground. Then I kept drifting down, past the ground, past rock, sand, and magma through the layers of earth. It must have been years. It felt like 500 years. Then I reached the other side, and I felt myself rising through all the layers of earth past the magma, sand, and rock, past the ground, back into a body, another body, almost the same body, and flattened like a little red pancake. But I felt so empty. My belly had sunk. Little Everett was not with me anymore. Many others laid around me, broken like me, almost alive and completely still. But little Everett was nowhere. While everyone else exchanged for their own lives themselves, I must have exchanged little Everett for mine. I cried. I cried for years. We all bled into the ground for years. Why did the tree keep us alive? Did they like pain? Did they drink our blood? Was there any reason for any of it? I lost no effort. He had no say. He did not even say his first word. I ruined his life from the start. Maybe he lives in Wonderland. I hope he lives in Wonderland. One day, one random day, the music grew and there was the brightest flash. We found ourselves outside at the base of the tower. The tree had been freed, and we were in a field of trees. 
wonderland had risen. But little Everett was still missing. We were all lifted out in helicopters. I was at the hospital faster than ever before. They told me it was 2003. They told me everything I knew was wrong. They told me everyone I knew was dead. And now they plan to fix me. I'm sorry, Pa. I'm sorry, Ma. I'm sorry, friends. I'm sorry, Leonard. I'm sorry, Everett. Please remember me. Please, please remember me. After a second lobotomy, Virginia never spoke again. Late in her life, she produced a series of paintings titled The Right Life. Ma, Pa, and I, my friends and I, Leonard and I, or Leonard, Everett and I, together. Virginia yes, I dream that someday. What? Virginia passed away in 1980 at the age of 59. Her son Everett is believed to be the 20th Washington absentee. Bro, what did I just watch? <laughs> Dude, I, I have no idea what is going on. That, like, I understood part of that. But what? Like, I... So... Okay, so... Let's try to, let's try to culminate. <laughs> let's try to get our thoughts together and like discuss what happened. So the Washington tree tragedy happens where she's climbing on the tree. The tree bends over, bam, zaps her, teleports her out. She's now in what I'm going to call for now, because I'm not sure if it's the same as the corner dimension. I don't want to make any assumptions and confuse anybody. So I'm going to call it the tree dimension. So it's in the tree. She's in the tree dimension. She meets Everett, who she names Everett. Um, they spend what feels like 500 years together. Then the trees bend again. She gets zapped out. She's back in Rockefeller Center. Now she switched realities, which we know because her parents are slightly different. The world that she spawns in is slightly different. Everything's slightly altered, showing that now she's in a different reality. Um, everybody hates her. Her parents dislike her. They disown her because they know that she's not their daughter. She lives this horrible life. She eventually goes back to the tree, which is at Rockefeller Center for some reason, just chilling there. And the tree is like, um, I know you want to go home, but you can't go home. What was the exact words? said that I had to be ready to exchange one life for my own. She tells her that, 
and uh virginia's like all right got it comes back in three years tells her the same thing you have to be ready to exchange one life you have to be ready to exchange one life eventually she gets pregnant from leonard leonard however you pronounce it and um she names the baby everett and then that's when the tree is like all right cool you're ready now go to the washington monument she goes this is where i get really lost is that she goes in the washington monument she goes up the elevator which we've learned about before the elevator opens she drops to the bottom and instead of dying her soul like comes out of her body and keeps sinking eventually comes back up but she's back in her body but can't move like that's what i don't understand i do notice yes i do notice that leonard is in this is an established character i have his name written down here from lincoln looker i believe so i want to i want to run it back on that too just to make sure and then yeah i do i do also want to think that everett from the tree dimension is her actual baby grown up again i don't know how that works like she, she did the tree did tell her you have to like sacrifice one life for your own so she clearly sacrifices everett i don't know why she didn't pick up on that she was like so shocked like oh my god everett's gone like no duff only the tree told you that three times and you were only ready on the third time when you were pregnant like no duh bro obviously you were going to trade everett for whatever happened to you and then i'm very confused on how she's like there with all the bodies just inside the monument and then all of a sudden they get teleported to a forest we found ourselves outside at the base of the tower wonderland has risen we're lifted out by helicopters they're told it was 2003 which means she's a part of the group of the 20 people that went missing over the years at the washington monument but then popped up in 2003 and that's like okay cool we know that virginia is now connected to this and then they drop this bombshell at the end that she died in 1980 but they straight up said that she popped out in 2003 okay okay that makes sense neil that was going to be my theory otherwise so but this is ah oh, that god that makes it so confusing so originally she is from the normal reality right like she's from our reality no no she's from monument mythos reality right what reality is she originally from? Is she originally from our reality or the Monument Mythos reality? There is two Virginias, yeah, because they, they swap, correct? At the tree incident? Yeah, two different realities, two different Virginias. I would think that she's from because Rockefeller does say that the kids tell him that he's not president in the other universe, which we know he's not president in our universe. All right, you guys are saying Dean verse. OK. Oh, God, but I guess. Yeah, I don't know about the Nixon verse yet, so I guess one of them could be from the Nixon verse. Okay, but I understand that there's two Virginias now. One of them died in 1980, or apparently the one that. <laughs> so the one that. It 
It's Psycho. That sounds crazy. Please let me know when you finish that. I will 100% watch that in Analog Horror about spiders. Thank you for the $10 super chat, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, the ver Rockefeller. Yes, Ro yeah, Rockefeller's president in the Dean verse. Yes, the Dean verse is what I meant by when I said in the Monument Mythos verse. I don't really want. I feel like I need. I feel like I'm supposed to know more information. Like I want to watch Nixon verse two. Okay, that does make sense, though. They're talking about the other Virginia that passed away in 1980. So Virginia does end up making it back to her correct reality, but she pops out in 2003. So she does successfully switch back to her own. She goes home, basically. Yeah, Nixon verse died in 1980. Dean verse. Okay, all right, so... So the other Virginia is from the Nixon verse. Okay, you know what? We're we're gonna keep watching. <laughs> Clearly, I don't know enough yet. Um, but the statement from Mays in the description of this video is Everett Arnoldson, commonly referred to as the twentieth Washington absentee, is a humanoid creature that is purported to inhabit the forests of the Washington zone. Have you ever seen Everett? Share your sightings on Twitter is a humanoid creature so they say he's not human he's a humanoid creature yeah so the concept of time is different it seems like you definitely can teleport the trees can teleport you across time into another verse I just I'm just trying to look at a few things before before we move on. All right. All right. <laughs> Dude, this is so Meredith, what's going on? Hello. It's it's so difficult because you don't know that's the I, I think that's one my only problem with analog horror is that sometimes you don't know if you're supposed to if you just haven't put the dots together yet with the evidence that you've been giving or if you're not supposed to know yet like if you're supposed to be confused but I think I'm gonna wait just before I think of any theories or anything on that because we definitely I definitely need more information and I definitely do think I'm gonna get more information on this whole thing but there's a lot going on. That's kind of crazy, though, that she uh, jumps through time like that. All right. I need a quick break. Uh, two minute break. Bathroom break. Go to the bathroom if you got to go to the bathroom. Take a pee. Uh, get Grab a snack. Grab some water. Make sure to get, grab some water. Stay hydrated. I will be right back in like two minutes.
All right, I'm eating a little snacky snack real quick. Fiber one brownie bar. Okay, I dropped it. Uh, I'm gonna read some super chats too while I eat it real quick. Any super chats that I missed. Uh, Laverne, thank you for the $10 super chat. Hey Marcus, I love your videos so much and I love your analog hard videos. Thank you so much for being here at the stream. I really appreciate the super chat. We got more and more analog hard videos coming soon. The guys, I wish I had unlimited time because I saw the analog horror suggestion channel today in the discord that, that you guys sent. You guys sent so many suggestions and so many of them look good. And there, there are so many on my list. I literally just don't have the time to do them all. Like Monument Mythos is going to take at least another week after this because we have to go over the Nixon verse and season three. I don't even know how long they both are. I'm guessing they're longer than season one. They're probably just as long as season two. Hmm. It's psycho. Thank you for another ten dollars. I did say when you finish that analog horror about the spiders, send it to me because, you know, I hate spiders. I'm absolutely horrified of spiders. So I would love to go over that and torture myself a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, arachno arachnophobia for real. Oh, no, nah, you didn't miss the whole live. You're chilling. You joined in good time. We just made it halfway through the second half of season two. So we got three more videos left. All of which I'm really excited for. The titles of the last three are Air Force One Fallen Angel. Which I'm sure is going to discuss the whole Air Force One uh, plane incident from the first season. Liberty Lurkers. So more about the Statue of Liberty, I'm sure. And Alcatraz Apocalypse, which is obviously going to be about Alcatraz. And they're not terribly long. Five minutes, 12 minutes, and 11 minutes in that order. I hope we get more crab stuff in season three, because I would love to know more about the crab. I'm incredibly behind on my water today. I'm only at 1 p.m. <laughs> I really got to catch up. Sir, thank you for the five. When Virginia said the dust in the tree world smelled like baby powder, I immediately thought of Mount Rushmore. <gasps> you know what? That is probably a connection. That makes sense because if you actually look back at the Mount Mush at, at Mount Mount Mushmore, Mount Rushmore, it kind of when we saw it like at its peak, like when they weren't putting the powder and stuff on it, it looked very spiky. Maybe those are more trees, like the trees are growing on it, and they use the baby powder to stop the trees from growing. That would make sense. I mean, they definitely don't want the trees to grow, because <laughs> that would be definitely a problem if they had like a full grown forest of those things. Hmm. Definitely something to think about. Yeah, I need I even think about that baby powder connection thing. Yes, I did draw the mimic and huggy wuggy back here. I plan on drawing more more things back here. I just I'm not sure what else to draw. I was thinking about maybe Amanda the Adventurer, um maybe an alternate from Mandela catalog. But dude, expo markers die so quickly. Like I killed like a whole black expo marker working on that somehow. I have no idea how. I literally bought a brand new black marker and by the time I was done doing those, it was already it was already shot. Alright. 
Here we go. Let's run it. Let's run it. Next video, Air Force One a Fallen Angel. Here we go. Five minutes. Let's get this bread. It's psycho. That would be awesome. I would love that. <laughs> Thank you for the ten dollars super chat. That'd be sick if I could have a cameo in it. That'd be very very cool. Okay, so yeah, as we know, they shot down the Air Force One plane. Simulation of strike, property of maze. August 2003. There's 2003 again. After making various stops across the United States, Air Force One flew into the restricted airspace of Washington, D.C. After an extensive evaluation, the United States Air Force took action. Okay, that's some shooting it down. Mission accomplished. The United States of America. Why is it cut up like that? Legally known as the United Zones of America? The Alcatraz Zone? Rushmore Zone? Washington Zone? the three zone capitals a waste a wasp haha sapa Nakach tank ex tribus unum out of three one Gore's America is a shell for the true ruler beneath our feet. It is time for the underground god to leave. He does not belong here. But the world's egg cannot hatch without force. We must fracture the zones ourselves. We must split the earth open. Once it leaves, there will be peace and a state for each and every person. No more zones. For the cracks will be the true borders. A thousand states of America are a thousand states of peace. We are no longer the Anti-Device Association. We are the advocates for the division of America. How will we divide the land with our fallen angel, of course? Who would have thought that he would land on the tomb of the unknown soldiers? We found him before anyone else. Burnt and broken from the blast. After we fix him, he will be a walking atom bomb. He will evict the horned serpent the same way he evicted the traitor, President Rockefeller from reality. Advocates for the Division of America. ADA. There's obviously a connection between all of the ADAs. The unification of 1980 was short-lived as state borders were restored by the end of the decade. However, due to the extent of the unification of 2003, state borders are not expected to be restored within the century. The ADA refuses to acknowledge to recognize the three zones and their capitals.
The Fallen Angel on the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, 2003, photographed by the ADA, Property of Maze. There we go. At it again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I mean, by, by fallen angel, I totally believe it's the it was the angel on the plane. But who is the fallen soldier? Um, they reference the serpent, which we know Maze has talked about before. They talk about how Rockefeller was a traitor. Yeah, and they were previously known as the Anti-Device Association. That sounds like that the anti dean Association evolved into the Anti-Device Association. I don't think it's a coincidence that they're both ADA. Yeah, so don't answer this because... Never mind, I'm not going to ask because somebody's going to spoil in chat. Um, hold on, let me look at those two super chats. Uh, Oscar, with the $10 super chat. So this isn't a spoiler, just a Q&A thing that was never clarified in the videos. The Rushmore zone is fairly normal, with a few special trees sprouting. The Washington zone has a denser tree count. Which makes sense, because uh, didn't Virginia say that she was like in the Washington zone? And the picture that she showed had like a bunch of uh, trees around her. Uh, meanwhile, the Alcatraz zone was described to be a mass of fleshy substance covering over that section of the country, slowly spreading as shown in the diagram Alcatraz attack. Yeah, which we did see, we did see in the original Alcatraz video how it was sh stretching over there, and I was very confused by that. Oh, true. Very good point, Yali. Anti-device does make sense given that, um, yeah, Dean did put a device into a ton of Americans. He put that hearing device in a, into a bunch of them. So that totally makes sense. Really good point, Yali. I did not think that. My brain is not on it today. <laughs> uh, let's see. Is there anything in the description? Statement from Maze. Both the Anti-Device Association and the Splinter Group advocates for the division of america are criminal organizations if you encounter members of either group please report them to your local authorities the 2003 world egg transmission was produced digitally by the ada and converted to an analog signal for broadcasting uza maps are updated yearly to reflect the expanding nature of the three zones keep up with the latest developments on twitter i say twitter but it's twttr but it's essentially the same thing right Ah, <clears throat> oh, man. Someone in the comments here under this video said it wouldn't be a Monument Mythos video without answering a couple questions and then raising like five or six more. The plot continues to thicken. I couldn't agree more. Cheyenne, thank you for becoming a member again. Struggling with financials right now, so I can't super chat. I appreciate you even being here. Thank you for becoming a member on top of that. Thank you so, so much. All right. Uh, let's jump into the next one. Damn, we've been streaming for an hour and a half already? It does not at all feel like it's been that long. What the hell? All right, Liberty Lurkers. Let's get it. I've been waiting to hear about the Statue of Liberty for a minute. I think the Statue of Liberty was the second video we saw in season one. We haven't really heard about it since, so. That do not look like my Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Progress is a colossal neoclassical sculpture at the entryway of the Suez Canal in Port Said, Egypt. Progress was de designed by Frederick August Bartholdi, who later designed the Statue of Liberty. Okay.
And we know about how he designed the Statue of Liberty. The following audio is an excerpt from an interview with the developer of the Suez Canal. Also, I want to clarify this on stream. I'm just going to let it play out at the moment. But in the videos, I am going to like voice it over for you guys. I did ask about that in season one. I am going to voice them over for the video. It's, I mean, we could still do that here if you guys want me to. Um, but I'm just going to let it play out for the moment. Actually, yeah, screw it. I cannot stand doing it like this. Okay. Um, I'm going back from the beginning. I'm going to voice it over. I'll just mute it. Many cannot name the region where my accent is derived from. I blame my many years in diplomatic service for this. While my accent has suffered at its hands, my understanding of human nature has not. Diplomacy, not psychology, is the true study of the mind. Today, I know that there is only one genuine source of happiness. It is the source for every category of happiness. Efficiency. All happiness flows from efficiency. It is the ease of success, not the success itself, which best determines the quality of satisfaction. It was my desire for efficiency which drove me to establish the Suez Canal Company. Like the, col like the Colossus of Antiquity, I wished- God damn it. I knew that was going to happen. Like the Colossus of Antiquity, I wished to unite the trade of the East with the West. I wished to pull them together in the fraction of the time that it had taken for them to engage in the past. There is a dream I would like to share with you all, perhaps a premonition. A traveler in the distant future stands at the entrance of the Suez Canal and watches the ships drift past with rapture. The traveler realizes that they had achieved true happiness greater than that of any human being who had stood there before, for at their feet, at their place in time, the canal will have spared our civilization a total of a million years in sailing time. What is bro babbling about? Of course we will not be there to share their realization, and the Traveler will only know us as characters in the myths of their time. But believe me, it will happen. Ships will be in service for hundreds of years longer, and sailors will spend less time reaching their destinations and more time in their destinations. Sway's canal is efficient, and happiness will flow from it endlessly. Thank you. Until now, what you have heard was from a speech I wrote for the grand opening of the canal. However, I did not read this speech. I could not bring myself to lie to everyone. Oh, bro switching up, hold up. I did not choose to build the canal. The man beneath America ordered me to. Any night, he can sink into my dreams. Whoa. From the book of Ferdinand, The Sinking Man and the Forbidden Fruit. Animations by the Advocates of the Division of America. For the Division, my bad.
Oh, he's stretching. Across different realities? What does that mean? <laughs> like, why did he get stretched? For years, it was believed that all surviving audio recordings of the infamous 1889 Liberty Lurker interview with Frederick August Bartholdi were fakes produced by American publicists. They did say that. These publicists were known as Liberty Liars and would sell their false artifacts to American socialites. However, the authenticity of one audio recording continues to be disputed. It is simply known as Le Authentique Liberty Lurker. I definitely, definitely messed that up. Here we go again. To the providence I confess, it is a heavy burden that I cannot share with the world, but I cannot keep care- Alright, you talking way too fast, bro. But I cannot keep carrying it on my shoulders all alone. The most difficult part, the most painful, the one that made me uh, my sleep go away and my hair go gray, was the construction of the pedestal. Although the statue was intended to be a gift, the U.S. Ambassador regularly, regularly encouraged us to follow President Grant's requests. We made a deal, and each month we received a varying design and size requirements for the pedestal. After four years, requests to change the size of the structure ceased. People often ask why the pedestal is so disproportionate to the statue. All I can tell them is, ask the Americans. But I know why the pedestal is so massive, so tall. I simply cannot bring myself to tell them the truth. I am not strong enough. The truth being that I designed and... I... Abattoir? Abattoir? Abattoir. 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 <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Did not know that that's what that meant. It means a slaughterhouse. Okay. Just for him. Grant told me that he used to be normal like us. He called him the Horned Serpent. The Devourer of Villages. It was the name given to George Washington... This was no coincidence. Their damned founding father locked up in my foundation. George Washington is the serpent and is locked up in the Statue of Liberty? He called him the Horn Serpent or the Han Han Hanoda Hanoda Ganarius? What is that an actual thing? Town Destroyer. Oh. Oh, that's actually what George Washington was called. Wait, hold on. Is this? Is this actually Wikipedia? <laughs> yeah, Town Destroyer was the nickname given to George Washington. The Devourer of Villages was the name given to George Washington by the Iroquois. This is no coincidence. Wow, if only I had read the next line.
So. Okay, hold on. Hold on, I'm trying to read this thing. I knew there was a story about George Washington and some tree, right? I'm trying to get like a short version of it that's not an essay. Okay. Yeah, the cherry tree. I'm not sure if the, if that's what they're referencing with the tree there, with the whole tree thing going on. Apparently, George Washington cut down his dad's tree, and like he was like, "Yo, son, did you do this?" And he was like, "Yes." It was it was an apple. Yeah, his cherry tree. What kind of tree is this that they show? Can we even tell what kind of tree that is? It looks like an apple tree, right? These look like apples. Yeah, so I'm thinking, but it doesn't line up with the story because the story is said when he's a kid. Hold on, let's continue. Maybe, uh, maybe they'll answer the question for me. Are we looking at the serpent's body right now? You would have thought. Go back. Go back right now. No, never mind. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> I zoomed out. I have no idea what I'm actually looking at. It looks like... A pole? Okay, let's just... Following the release of the Liberty Lurker, surveyed the environment beneath the Statue of Liberty's pedestal. The release of the Liberty Lurker in 1985. They recorded the following video inside the Horned Serpent Metastructure. Colloquially known as Wonderland? What? <laughs> I'd probably sound like I'm fucking brain dead to you guys, because I cannot pronounce half these words. Chthonaut designation derived from the Greek words for underworld and sailor. Known as Wonderland, though. Following clip may disturb blank. Viewers who are sensitive to loud noises. All right, that warning probably goes for you guys, too. Prolonged exposure to music from the horn serpent metastructure may damage your brain. All right, warning. If you don't want brain damage, lower the volume of your TV. footage of the tree dimension.
Statement from Mays, archaic spellings and other minor deviations in the French transcriptions can be attributed to American publicists, often liberty liars, at the turn of the 20th century. These deviations have been preserved to maintain the transcription's historical integrity. While American publicists correctly capitalized Etats Unis, United States, in their transcriptions of Liberty Lurker interviews, French writers often left the country in lowercase to subtly hint at their own anti-American sentiments. Chthonot, which I'm definitely still pronouncing wrong, designation derived from the Greek words for underworld and sailor. Yeah, so what it sounds like is George Washington attempted to cut down the cherry tree, right? But because it's an alternate reality, right, we know that things are slightly different. So maybe it was an apple tree instead or whatever that tree that we saw in the image before. Uh, he attempts to cut it down, but it's actually neither. It's a special tree in reality. It's actually a special tree, like the trees that we've been seeing the whole series. Um, it teleports him to the uh, tree dimension and then they were saying that tree climbers get like distorted right so maybe he tried climbing one of the trees or something happened where he got like torn through realities and it turns him into the serpent and obviously because he's this giant serpent for whatever reason they were like let's just stuff him in the statue of liberty and we'll feed immigrants to him when they come from ellis island uh dormer top that's the good question how does the frozen normal george washington fall into this because that also means that that has to be a george washington from another reality and what did they do with that george washington we haven't heard about that one since that incident katha not thank you fnaf junkie appreciate that Yeah, Delaware George Washington is the other dimensions Washington. Does that mean that that whole video takes place in another dimension? Yeah, there's 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 definitely a lot of realities. And because I know the Nixon verse is a different reality, so I don't know what's from the Nixon verse and what's not. So it's hard for me to like form like a timeline here and an actual full analysis. Yeah, but there's definitely at least two versions of everyone, I agree. So, is the head of the horn- No, yes, the head of the- Yes, okay, wait, this makes sense now. Uh, what video is that? Uh, Maze Movie Maker. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. Alright, so, yeah, confirmed, um, the horn serpent is throughout under America. But its head is located in New York, which I think is on purpose for this diagram here. So is the head just in the Statue of Liberty? You know what I mean? And then they just feed bodies into the mouth like yum yum. And then whenever homies like, yo, I need some air, you know, the the Statue of Liberty just moves over like slightly. And then he comes out, takes a breather and then goes back in. I, I, I'm aware that the statue is used to free him, but the statue, I mean to feed him, but yeah, the statue also like, for some reason, lets it opens. I'm confused why it opens. Is the serpent's...
Yeah. Let's be real. I'm saying a whole lot of stuff, but I'm not actually going to get the answer of any of my questions until it comes out in the video. <laughs> All right. Alcatraz Apocalypse. Here we go. Season two finale, baby. Last video of season two. And then I'll just do a quick like look at season three in the next inverse just so we can take a peek. Um. All right. Here we go. Yeah, let's do it. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. President Thomas Jefferson. Hmm. It's a little on the nose there. Part one, the final upload of Dr. Disturbing. This video is only 11 minutes long too for a season finale. Dr. Disturbing presents. I see Alcatraz is the tale, don't worry. Dad's favorite things. Part 17, paintings. Okay. Road to Happiness by James Dean. It's a pretty spiky road, my guy. Llama Goddess, what's going on? How are you? Congratulations on a thousand subscribers, by the way. Together by Virginia Arnoldson. I see you soon, Dad. Three days later, three days after the final upload, the remains of Lauren and Quinn Arnoldson were discovered in the Grand Canyon. The siblings were last seen riding on two astonishingly large balloons. According to park officials, the balloons encountered are an unexpected crosswind, which caused both siblings to fall to their deaths. I have a feeling they were not balloons, and they were actually those giant floating heads. I forget exactly what they called them. Hello. The crowns, thank you. Oh, he said hi back. By the time you see this, I will be dead. I would like to know that the Anti-Dean Association held me captive. They forced me to read their scripts to hand them legitimacy. You've heard me read about Lincoln Lookers and the Starry Sphinx. Those were their words in my mouth, but they did not keep as close an eye on me as they should have. Whenever I visited my family, I went to my studio underground. I was able to read my own scripts through the New Delaware Journal. The feds and the association thought an Arnoldson ran into the station, but I had no crew. It was a one-man job. Only I read. Only I broadcast. This is the last script. This is the last broadcast. Three nights before my death, Alcatraz went stealth. It looked like it had completely disappeared while everyone was asleep, but it was still here. It was all around us. It had simply expanded. Fast. It mimicked the surrounding environment on a subatomic level. Everyone believed that it had not spread to the East Coast yet, but it definitely did. I have just finished the last batch of tests and I can confidently say that I am not the same person I was three days ago. Alcatraz had copied us all overnight. Every particle of this country and its citizens replaced. The United States is the ship of thesis. Inside my skull, this Alcatraz is fleshly reproduction of my brain. I remember a line from President Dean. If we sent everyone to prison, then what's a prison anymore? If everyone became a prison, then what's a person anymore? I will not live with a copy of myself. 
Better to extinguish myself now than to live a lifetime as someone as something else's handwork. I heard fire does the trick. Maybe I will see you in the next life. Remember me. For Everett. For Virginia. For America. Leonard W. Moreland. Victory or death. I already forgot how to pronounce this. Cothnot will receive data. He will convey it to you in a theatrical manner. He will arrive in your world after our apocalypse. February 22nd, 2022 in ours. No, uh, not November. October 1st, 2016 in yours. After a brief investigation, authorities concluded that Leonard W. Moreland experienced a violent psychotic break before committing self-immolation. What is immolation? To kill or destroy... Okay, that's by fire. So he set himself on fire. Nice, so they tried to cover that up by just saying he was crazy? The advocates were deranged. They are all ashes now. We will never be weapons again. Leave us alone or join the ash pile. That written by the ADA. After a two-decade search, the angel was located in Babylon Forest. Wait, what? Never be weapons again. Okay. Not sure what that means. Operation Thunderbird, Department of Technology and Animation. United States of America, Department of Technology, Operation Thunderbird. Hey, it's the statue. At the Grand Canyon, two androids lure freedom. The captive false children react to her presence. Energy from the false children reacts with the IPC, invisible particle cloud, known as Giza gas. X-Wing warrior collects a container. UZ Air Force? The warrior transports freedom to Babylon Forest. The controlled decay of the container allows freedom to exit after touchdown. Are they gonna make freedom fight the angel? Freedom encounters the angel. What? <laughs> Dude. Mutual assured destruction. Part five, warning. The following may disturb post implant viewers who are sensitive to loud noises. What 
What am I looking at? Oh my god, is this the corner world? It looks like the corner world with all the lines. Yeah, that looked like the serpent. Oh, maybe... No, maybe I'm wrong. About the, the corner thing. Survivors of the Great Division are known as Corner Folk. Did you know that the Horned Serpent is a true force of mass destruction? President George Washington was born on February 22nd, 1732. Toodaloo, type your last words on Twitter. So, let me get this straight. The angel fighting freedom caused the planet to explode and the only thing left was the serpent and any survivors became corner folk. And that's the end of the Dean verse. What? Okay, so I see how the Dean verse is a thing. But then how is season three a thing? Or season three... Season 3 doesn't take place in the Deanverse?
All right, I want to take a look at the Nixon versus teaser real quick. Man of Steel, Richard Nixon. The Nixon verse. Okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for nothing. <laughs> um... There's a 40 hour video in the Knicks. I mean a 40 minute video in the Nixon verse. I mean, to be fair, all the other videos are like five minutes long, but 40 minutes. God damn. The trees were the serpent. I could see that making sense. If the trees are just like the spikes on the serpent that end up coming to the surface. And that's why they're so hard to cut. Listen, I'm going to be real with you. Definitely sending them videos to another reality, maybe. 40 minutes, sorry, not 40 hours. I, I really don't know what to fully say. I think I got to like rewatch half of these videos on my own time and take like deep notes about all the names of the characters and everything like just rewatch seasons one and two so then I could come to like a valid conclusion at least of what I think so far and then put it in the uh in the video I'm not doing the 40 minute video right now I'm sorry that was the last video for today, guys. Yeah, 40 hours. No, we would not definitely not do that. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to um, I'm going to probably rewatch these, take my time going over them. And then uh, I'll come out with the full video on season two, give my whole breakdown and thoughts on it. And then um, then I guess we'll go over the Nixon verse and then season three. So. Season two is definitely crazy, definitely crazier than season one with the amount of information dropped and chaos that goes on. But I feel like for the Dean verse to just end like that, like there's. I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah, Oscar, I'm gonna ha I'll have to I'll look at uh I'll look at some of the QA stuff. I'm not sure if it was you, Oscar, but someone said that in the stream yesterday that that uh there was a uh, Alex did some QA's and like answered some questions that aren't always answered in the series. So I'll have to look at that. Funnily enough, the 40 minute video doesn't have much to do with the lore at all. So why is it 40 minutes? <laughs> I mean, I guess we'll find out next time. Um, but I would expect, uh, I would expect the full video for season two to drop. Like I said, Saturday, I want to say Sunday, the latest, I'm going to try my best to get this video out. It's now four hours plus of footage. So bear with me on that. Um, but yeah, well, uh, I'm going to try to drop the video soon. We'll most likely stream the Nixon verse next week at some point. So make sure you guys are subbed to the channel if you're not already. First of all, make sure you're subscribed. Um, make sure you hit that notification bell. I'm not saying that to be annoying. I'm saying that so you generally get notifications of when videos and stuff are uploaded so that you know what's going on. Uh, also, be sure to join the Discord. The link is in the description down below. Join the Discord. I always send out notifications when we're starting a stream or when a stream is planned or something like that. So definitely be uh, sure to know. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram. I like posting on there, too. I also make announcements on there as well. Um, I think that's really it. I think that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you to everybody that came through to the stream today. We had like 2,000 people at one point. And I think we averaged around like 1,900. So that was really awesome. I appreciate all your guys' love and support. 
uh, a few super chats that I may have missed. Uh, do you want to sit? Thank you for another five dollars uh, for that for that message that I read before. Uh, it's Psycho who is now gone, I'm sure, because they're working on their analog horror. Thank you for the ten dollars super chat. And uh, also, thank you to everybody that became members. I believe I got all of the super chats. I don't think I missed any, but I could be wrong. I'm going to find a better way to list these out because Streamlabs only does so much of a good job with this. Or at least I got to learn a better way to find them. But uh, all right, guys. Also, don't forget um, the Tangy Virus Part 2 video comes out tomorrow. So if you missed the Tangy Virus video that I made, make sure to go check it out right now. It's the video after... Uh, Monument Mythos? Hold on, let me check it out. Let me check on the channel real quick. It is this video right here. It's this one. This one. This one right here. Do not drink the water. It's that one. That video right there. Definitely check that out. I know a large amount of you checked it out already, but that, that video is so, so good. And the sequel is coming out tomorrow, and I love the sequel too. So definitely do not sleep on that one. But all right, guys. Thank you so much for coming through this stream today. I love you guys so, so much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.